Good morning, I'm Brian Reagan. This is Tyler Kelly. And we welcome you to Mornings with Brian and Tyler. Today we are in John 9, 35 through 41. We finish up the man born blind. Tyler. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? And Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and that those who see may be made blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin, but now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. All right. And so we go back to where we started in this one, and uh, the question came up, Who sinned this man or his parents? And Jesus said, this man and his parents, neither one of them sinned. Nevertheless, regardless of y'all's sin question, so that the power or the glory of God and the work of God might be clearly revealed, he restores the man to sight. And then he goes in and he is being tried. And everyone who knows him says he was born blind. And they keep asking, well, then how'd you get your sight back? And he keeps telling them, I already told you. Why do you need me to tell it to you again? Um, apparently, a blind guy who receives his sight apparently has some intestinal fortitude and is not easily intimidated. Um, and they finally said, you know, we know this man isn't from God because of this. And he says, well, it's an amazing thing, isn't it? You don't know where he's from, but he knows how to open my eyes. Uh, you know, so he has to be from God. And... Uh, you know, and he, and he, and then, well, tell us again, he said, do you want to be his disciples too? Now, the man doesn't actually have a clue what Jesus looks like. He just knows basically what this guy kind of sounds like. But his attitude is, whoever it is that has this ability to restore sight, yeah, I'm his disciple. I don't know anything about him, but I'm willing to follow him and commit myself to him. And so... When Jesus rolls up on him in verse 36, when he says, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? He's not calling Jesus Lord there. Okay? Not in the sense that, oh, you're the Lord. No, he's using Lord. It should just be a little L. That's his intent when he asks that. Just like Saul on the road to Damascus. He wants to know who the Son of God is so he can believe in him. But Jesus says, you've both seen him, and it is he who's talking with you. Well, when did he see him? Right then. <laughs> but Jesus has been in conversation with him already. And now the man, when he says, Lord, I believe. And what did he do immediately, Tyler? Worshipped him. Worshipped him. You see the man's declaration that he was the disciple of the one who opened his eyes. As soon as Jesus is there talking to him, I have no doubt he recognizes the voice of Jesus. You probably are going to remember what the guy sounds like who brings your sight back to you. Just saying. Um, but the larger issue is what Jesus gets to here. For judgment I've come into this world, those who do not see may see, and those who see may be made blind. This is the danger of American Christianity. We are pretty much all bound up in either Phariseeism or Sadduceeism. And like people back then who were part of the religious elite, they wanted to maintain the way things were. They did not want to hear what the Word of God actually said, but they were also looking for something that would fill the emptiness and the void, but they would not come and submit to the Word of God. At that time, it was the Word of God in flesh. But even today, we have a problem in America that we do not want to submit to the Word of God. But this man who was blind, his first response is to worship or to fall down, to submit to the Word of God. Not because God commands him to. That is the natural response of a disciple. And the Pharisee asked the question, so are you saying we're blind? He said, well, if you were blind, you wouldn't have your sin. He said, but because you think you see, you're still stuck in the mire of your own pit, mire of your sin. 
And I'll say this. If you're a fellow preacher out there, get up some Sunday and tell your congregation that they are stuck in the bitterness of sin and most of them couldn't find their way out, um, even if they had 10 Bibles. And if they don't lynch you that day, you say, brother, but I wouldn't say that. That's judging them. Well, that's a funny thing, though, isn't it? Jesus said, I came for judgment so that those who don't see can see and so that those who think they can see they're going to be trapped in even more blindness because why? They won't do what the blind man did and just say, I submit. I'm done fighting. I'm just going to go with your word and whatever it says, that's what I'm going to do regardless of how I feel. I'm just going to worship you, God. Do you have some thoughts on this, my brother? I think it was interesting in verse 40. So there are Pharisees who hear the comment when uh, Jesus asks them, do you believe in the Son of God and the response and everything? Note the Pharisees don't lose their minds over the fact that Jesus first asked if he knew who the Son of God was and then claims to be the Son of God. The Pharisees don't argue. They don't have a hissy fit over it. They instead ask a question because they actually believe it and that he's telling the truth. Mm-hmm. Because in every other instance, the Pharisees have an absolute conniption fit over Jesus, or either implying or directly saying like he does in this point. But this one, there's no argument. There's just a, well then, like you said, are we still blind then? Well, and that would, uh, as we mentioned in one of the other videos, you know, could these be some of the same Pharisees that sent Nicodemus? Mm -hmm. That, you know, they believed he was from God, but they were afraid of... All the rest of them. Yeah. chief priests and all this yeah. and when the response is to fall down and worship him if you're dressed as a Pharisee wow mm -hmm. so yeah no good point brother good point so with that we bid you good morning Lord willing we'll see you back at 1230 for our midday meditation and 7 o'clock tonight for brother Greg Edwards teaching on Wednesday night Bible study